Hello and welcome to Media Horse. I'm Caveman and today we'll be looking at a superhero for the new age. Or I guess a Batman ripoff for the new age. Today we're looking at the cape. So let's head to the Hall of Justice as I throw it to the round table. Okay, the first thing that I want to say is that this show improved a little throughout the course of its run, but there was one issue that remained constant throughout the entire series. And that issue was the fact that this show had the same pacing as most jet fighters. Yeah, that was a pretty annoying issue. The first episode moved at such a frantic pace that when it ended, we were practically given whiplash. We actually tracked the number of plot elements in the first episode that could have been given their own entire episode to be developed, and we came up with a conservative estimate of 12 episodes worth of plot points. We were trying to be reasonable. Some of those could be combined together into single episodes for the sake of moving forward at a decent pace, but to have them all compressed together into one episode is extremely off-putting. Now, I understand that they want to introduce their superhero in the first episode, but they're trying to cram every aspect of the premise for this show into the episode as well. It also would have helped if the main character was even slightly competent or intimidating. One of the big problems that the character has is an overriding sense of I'm Batman syndrome. You are not. Well, why don't we break down the first episode a bit? Because I feel that we need to properly convey how insanely dense it is. This is a horrific example of a plot dump. Some shows can use a plot dump to good effect by building it up with tone and providing some major revelations. But this is just a 40-minute dump that the show takes on the audience. Yeah, the first episode reveals to us that our main character is Vince Faraday. He's happily married, has a young son, is a respected police officer, and clearly nothing could ever go wrong. However, something does go wrong when Vince is working public security at a rally and the chief of police is murdered by the criminal known as Chess. He's sort of like the Riddler analog for this show. A little bit of Two-Face as well. Yeah, Vince then decides that because Palm City is on the fast track to having a privatized police force, he's going to transfer over to Ark in advance so that he can secure a better position. Yeah, his friend convinces him that he would be well suited for Ark. He then gets contacted by Orwell, the Oracle of this series, who informs Vince that Ark was responsible for smuggling explosives that killed the chief into the city. Vince goes to the train yard and finds that Orwell's claims are true, and he calls on his friend to aid him in the investigation. His friend betrays him, and it turns out that the owner of Ark, Peter Fleming, is actually Chess. <gasps> they then nail Chess's mask onto Vince's skull and send him running through the train yard. They send a task force after him with the intent of killing him and feigning him for the murder of the police chief. He hides under a tanker and finds a trapdoor that leads into a series of tunnels. He falls down through the trapdoor just as the ARC task force open fire on the tanker and cause it to explode. Would you mind not shooting at the thermonuclear weapon? He is then introduced to the individuals who helped save his life. The Carnival of Crime, run by- Damn it, Keith David, what are you doing here? You are Goliath! Hey, the man's gotta eat. Anyway, in exchange for his safety, Vince gives them his security card for ARC, which allows them access to all the bank vaults in the city. How far in are we? SON OF A BITCH! So after the carnival goes on a crime spree, we see Vince milling about the carnival and essentially bemoaning himself for being a dead man. Mm -hmm. It's at this point that he finds a cape. You know that video of a kid playing with a stick like it's a lightsaber? He does that, with a piece of cloth. I'm Batman! He 
then goes to Keith David's character, Max Malini, and essentially through a series of contrivances is trained to be a superhero. The warriors after the Batang dynasty use their robes as weapons. Again! And so will you. One day. After completing his training, Vince goes to confront Scales, who is our killer croc stand-in. He runs the train and dockyards, and serves to smuggle contraband for Ark. We're not entirely sure what his accent is, but we're gonna go with Welsh, as that's where the actor hails from. Vince, now dressed like a comic book hero that his son likes, the cape, proceeds to get his ass handed to him. He survives being thrown into the river by having the first half of the episode pointlessly flash before his eyes. He then meets Orwell, who turns out to be an obligatory hot chick. She's played by the ridiculously overqualified Summer Glau. No power in the verse can stop me. Vince then learns that Chess and Scales have abducted Max, and he returns to the shipyard to try and save Max. Max actually escapes on his own, and the cape meets up with him. Chess attempts to blow up the ship they're on by wiring the explosives that they were smuggling to be activated via his phone. However, Orwell blocks the cell phone signal, resulting in one of the greatest one-liners ever. Okay, I lied. We then have the obligatory fight where the cape confronts Jess for the first time, only to have Jess escape. All of this in the first episode! The plot for the series as a whole is rather wacky and exaggerated, but in a comic book sense. I actually think that there was the bare skeleton here for a really good series. I think the tone and execution of the series were heavily impacted by the cancellation of the show Heroes. Heroes had numerous characters with countless abilities who were all involved in various subplots. And as such, it ran into the issue which a lot of comic-inspired creations run into, which is excessive continuity. The plot became too entangled and convoluted for the casual viewer, or just about any viewer for that matter, to keep track of. With the cape, we see return to the bare-bones basics. One hero with essentially one primary plot. Vince isn't really all that interesting. In fact, he's just bland. He does have a few good moments later on as the cape, but they don't do much to redeem him for being such an utterly uninteresting character. Still, he wasn't as bad as his family. Hey, the wife is acceptable. At points. Most of the time I found her to be pretty annoying as well. I mean, how many times can she stand a foot away from the cape without recognizing that it's Vince? You know, if Vince wants to be Batman so much, why won't he just let his family die? The son annoyed me to no end. It's not even the kid's acting. I'm not going to blame him for this show, but the writing is horrific. I got sick of the subplots about the kid. Oh, Trip is being bullied at school. Oh, it's Trip's birthday and I'm not home. Oh, he's feeling lonely. Shut the hell up. I found myself hating the damn character. There is one redeeming thing about Vince that we learn early on, and that's the fact that he doesn't become a superhero solely for the purpose of fighting crime. He dons the cape in order to give his son hope, because his son is a fan of the comic. Speaking of which, that is the dumbest moniker ever, and the comic book looked extremely lame. You know, 
Uh, when I was really young, I liked Thomas the Tank Engine. Am I the only one that sort of wants to see Vince dress up as a tank engine and fight crime? There was one point where the wife introduces the cape to her boss, and she actually uses the line, He has his own comic book. Really? That's the level of writing we're going with? Well, let's look at some of the better characters. Are you talking about Max Molini? Yeah, apparently Max was once a great thief known as Cosmo. <laughs> Cosmo? I couldn't have gotten through this show without him. It helps that he belittles Vince from time to time. Ironically, that makes us relate to him a bit. Who are you? What do you want? Money, you poor slow-thinking man. Does the word privacy mean the same thing in your dictionary as it does in mine? If I were you, I'd run like hell. Don't let me have to open a can of whoop-ass on you, yeah? The whole carnival shows Vince up at some point. That's true, but that's also part of the failure of the show. Whenever Vince is being taught something, we simply see him fail at it once, and then we see him succeed at it. And also, I know that Rolo is the strong man of the carnival, but... It doesn't make it any less pathetic to watch our main character get beaten up by a midget. And the weird thing is that his fighting style apparently only works against midgets and henchmen. I will agree that Keith David is the only actor who succeeds in making the dialogue compelling with every line. I'm using my stage voice! <laughs> but what about the villains? What about Chess? I kind of like the Peter Fleming character. I thought his performance was quite good. I will agree that he had more theatricality than Vince. James Frain is the actor who plays Fleming, and he's over the top, but given the material, that's not surprising. And he does sort of make it work. They never use his gimmick of viewing things as a game in a particularly interesting manner, but uh, there was some rather cool symbolism at points. Though to be fair, we see much more of Fleming than we do of Chess. Uh, true, but there were a couple actors, including James Frain, Summer Glau, Keith David, and Elliot Gould, who forced me to ask, What the hell are you doing here? Well, it's a solid premise. It's simply the execution that was lacking. And Summer Glau did an okay job. But the writing for her was horrible. Every time they decided to hint at something, we could instantly see right through it. Uh, but like just about every other character, Oracle was an interesting concept that was horribly executed. You mean Orwell? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. She's mostly just IT support until the end of the series. But let's cycle through some of the minor villains quickly. Scales was pretty damn stupid at points. And I gave him my best rattlesnake face. His makeup was not that good. Uh, that is to say that it didn't look like a deformity. I think that there were some interesting directions that they could have taken the character, but didn't. Uh, there was a suggestion of him starting a war with Fleming at one point, but that goes pretty much nowhere. And what was with that random cake bit? It was just phenomenally stupid. My favorite villain was Dice. Again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but there was an interesting idea there that was ruined with annoying execution. The idea behind Dice is that she's a savant with the ability to calculate immense probability equations in her head. Uh, there were some interesting clips where we could view the world from her perspective, but for the most part, the character didn't actually do much to define herself. I have a few issues with how her powers are presented. One, she makes a couple of predictions that involve variables she couldn't possibly have knowledge of. Two, despite the exaggerated nature of her powers, she still fails to kill Fleming. Three, she claims that she can't be able to account or compensate for the cape. But we aren't ever given an explanation. The villain I actually liked was Kane. He is shown in the second episode and he was a master of poisons and knives and was a member of an assassination organization named Taro. We don't see much of him, and I must admit that I'm annoyed at how the cape prepared to fight him. Oh, that was dumb. Okay, maybe we'll go a little slower there. Ah! 
Darwinism would dictate a very different outcome from this training. There was also the Lich, who was really just a mediocre black mask slash scarecrow ripoff. I'm trying to stop an attack on Palm City via weaponized neurotoxin. Well, you know how it is, Mr. Fox. You're out at night looking for kicks. Someone's passing around the weaponized hallucinogens. I'm Batman. The first episode that he's in sets up a rather interesting terrorist plot involving a psychotic cult that follows an individual known as the Lich. The second episode drops that subplot almost completely in favor of a pretty damn stupid stalker crush storyline. Ugh, he's another character that could have benefited from a more creative character design. He looked like he had a minor skin condition, and his clothes were just underwhelming. He looked like he was a member of the Adams family. I think he should have gone for black robes and everything. I would have liked a more Frankenstein meets Solomon Grundy look with, like, you know, tattered regal attire. Uh, and just imagine, it could have been his father's old suit and it would have fit the plot perfectly. He lost all credibility the moment he drugged Orwell so that he could marry her. Let's face it, that's not what you do with a girl when you've drugged her. Goggles and Hicks were interesting, but you guessed it, they had a screwed up execution. There's supposed to be a team where Goggles gathers info on the target and Hicks assassinates them. The only problem is that while they gather a bunch of info on the cape and even discover his identity, the info that they gather is never actually used against him. Yeah. Instead, they just send the copter thing after him. It flies! It shoots! It can pick up your signal just as well as an early 90s cell phone. It is the Tycho RC Death Copter. That should be noted that there was a 10th episode that was never aired, but could be viewed on the NBC website. This was us prior to seeing it. You guys know this was never even aired. Uh, should we really even watch it? Well, we should see what kind of conclusion the show went for. No. Please. No. No. Chimera. What. The. Fuck. Is it just me, or was that... good? That was pretty damn good. Yeah, it wasn't great, but that was... pretty enjoyable. It provided a decent conclusion to one of the subplots, but... it didn't try and deal with all of them. It was well-paced, and Vince was... actually kinda awesome. The pacing issues were corrected, and the director had actually directed episodes for Dexter, Treme, and The Wire. And this is the one they didn't air? Well, hold on, it wasn't perfect. They still had all of those occasions where the wife should have recognized him, but didn't. It's the cow. It acts like Clark Kent's glasses and makes it so she can't recognize him. Screw it! I was almost at the point where I'd be willing to make out with Clark Kent just to get that damn memory-erasing kiss, but this episode almost redeemed the series. Well, looking back on the series, you could have been so much more. There was power and potential there. You could have shown them that one TV show can make a difference. And you failed. 
The final episode improved my view of the show slightly, but it was too little, too late. This is a You Should Be Ashamed. That's a 4 out of 10. There were a lot of things about this series that made me angry. The cheese was so thick you could spread it on a cracker. A lot of the characters felt bland and uninteresting, and Vince Faraday was indistinguishable from a cardboard cutout of himself. And you know what? I wanted his son dead. Keith, David, and Rolo served to redeem the show slightly, but it wasn't enough. There was a bit of a balancing act here. I dislike a lot of the elements in this show, but the final episode was good enough to offset that to some extent, so I'm giving it a meh. That's 5 out of 10. I actually watched a good bit of the show when it was airing, mostly because it was on between Chuck and Harry's Law. But I quickly found out that the only significant enjoyment that I could extract from the show was via mocking it. I have no idea why Keith David was here. Maybe his only options were to do this or to whore himself out under an overpass. But I'm still not certain that he even made the right decision. More than anyone else, I hated the family and wanted them out of the story. There is very little here that I liked. The last episode was decent, but ultimately failed to live up to its potential, and it's a you should be ashamed for me. Well, with two you should be ashamed and one meh, the average to media whore's rating is... You should be ashamed. For those of you who want to be a superhero... I'm still here. Uh, see you next time?